Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our children and youth ministry middle and high school uh, lesson, virtual lesson, pre-recorded that we're bringing to you today. We're so excited for you guys to be able to join us um, today. Um, and actually, this is a first of many different lessons that will be available to you on YouTube. So we're so excited about it. Um, each week, each Sunday, actually, you'll get an opportunity to go onto YouTube and access a new lesson throughout the month. And so here we are, first Sunday uh, in the month of October, lesson for you. Um, we have Elder Eric Borley that will be sharing the lesson with you today. So excited about that. So if you don't have your Bibles and notepad, paper, whatever it is that you need, make sure you go get it as we dive into the lesson. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Elder Borley. Thank you very much there, Elder Guy. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing great. Uh, even though that we're away from each other, I just hope that you guys are doing all right and that you get some from that, from this. Uh, today's lesson will be out of uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse one, and it's about God's promise. Um, has anybody ever, uh, has there ever been a time that somebody promised you something and they didn't keep the promise? How did that make you feel? And you probably had a hard time trusting that person, especially if they said that they were going to do something for you ever again. Well, our lesson today is about God's promise to Abram, which his name will later be changed to Abraham. And God makes a promise. When God makes a promise, you know it's going to happen. Well, we're going to go back to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. But before we do that, we're going to have prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you right now in the name of your son, Jesus, God, just thanking you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to share your word and be able to speak to your people, God. God, I just ask that you would bless me and bless those that are on this video right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Like I said, we'll go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. And we look at the text in chapter 12, God tells Abraham to leave his country. And the country that he's living in is Ur, which is today would be called Iraq. So he tells him to leave his father, his household, leave the land, leave everything. And he doesn't know where he's going. But God said, I'm going to tell you, show you where you need to go. So he goes to the land of Canaan. And the land of Canaan is known as Israel today. So the Lord told Abraham to leave everything behind. Everything that he was accustomed to, he, 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 he left his friends, his family, everything that he knew. This lets you know that Abraham trusted the Lord. And he tells Abraham, he, he, he tells Abraham, when he leaves everything behind, that he trusts, the Lord tells Abraham that he's going to make him a great nation. He's going to bless him. He's going to bless his name. He's going to bless everything about Abraham. And he's going to curse those who curse him. So that means that God is already telling Abraham that he's making provisions for him to be able to take care of him and his family on this journey. This lets us know that when we spend more time with God, the more we're able, able to understand what God is trying to tell us. So now Abraham is going on this journey, which is approximately 700 miles. He's going on this journey with his wife, Sariah, and his nephew, Lot, and all that they own. Now you can see that Abraham had a real good, healthy relationship with the Lord because he trusted him that he left. Because you have to remember during this time, they didn't have any cell phones. They didn't have any internet. They didn't have any social media. They didn't have anything. So basically, your word was your bond that whatever you said, people entrusted that you would do it because you said it. Now, we're going to go back to chapter 15 and then. Abraham 
chapter 15, verse 1, Abraham had a vision from the Lord. And in this vision, the Lord shows him in a dream what he wants him to do. So this lets us know that God can speak to us in all kinds of ways. He can talk to us in a dream, in a vision, or audible. But the most important thing is that you're able to discern what God is trying to tell you. The Lord tells Abraham, don't be afraid. He's basically saying, don't be afraid. I got your back. I got you. You ain't got to worry about anything. So this lets us know that Abraham started to show some signs of fear when he was on this journey. And while you're on this journey, you have to think about it. There's a lot of things that, that goes on during this journey. You remember that they're not driving a vehicle. They're not flying in a plane. They're walking or they're riding a donkey or even on a camel, which is very uncomfortable, tiresome. And they probably go about 20 miles per day in the hot sun dealing with the elements. And it's also dangerous. The other dangers that you have to face is the weather, the terrain, you know, if you're walking over high terrain, the heat, the wild animals, and even robbers. So while they're there, you have to remember there's no wild, wild, there's no royal farms to stop to, to go to the bathroom, get snacks, water, or a Holiday Inn restaurant to go to, you, you know, to, to get some rest. You have to remember this is a long trip and you're with your family. And I remember when I used to go out on trips with my, 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 my mother and my father and my brother, we would ride in a car and I would always say, are we there yet? <laughs> so I can imagine and how hard this journey may have been for them. But as a believer, we must keep in mind that if God said he's going to do something, then it's going to happen. But you're going to be tested in the process of whatever God tells you. So you have to hold on to what God is telling you because he will bring you through it. This is where many people start to give up when they're being tested because they become frustrated. And usually when they're tested, and they give up their right where they're supposed to be. It reminds me of Peter when he was walking on the water. He was almost to Jesus when he started to sink down in the water and he said, save me. He reached out his hand and Jesus pulled him up. But he was almost there. And that's something that we always have to remember. And we must continue to push through our situation. And the acronym of push is, pray until something happens. And I'm a believer of prayer because I know what prayer can do. So Abraham expresses doubt to the Lord and saying, you know, I don't have any children. All I have is a servant who will be my heir to all my stuff. And the Lord says, wait, 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 wait a minute, Abraham. Well, Abram, because it hasn't been changed yet. He says, wait, Abram. You're going to have your own son. It's going to be your own flesh and blood. And the Lord repeats this promise and tells Abraham to look up in the sky. He said, because your descendants will be as numerous as the stars. And so shall your offspring. And once Abraham heard that, Abraham was able to believe what the Lord was telling him. The great thing about the Lord is that you know he knows what we need before we even need it. But he still provides and sets provisions for us each and every day. Now, Abraham is 75 years old when he left his, his land of Ur. And his wife, Sarai, was still unable to have children, even after the Lord had told her that she was going to have her own. So Sariah, now this is 10 years after they were told, Abraham, Abram was told that he was going to have a child. 10 years has elapsed. So his wife became impatient. She said, you know, I'm barren. I can't have any kids. And, you know, maybe if you have a child by somebody else, then I can enjoy the child. So what she does, she tells 
her husband, she says, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to my, my slave, my servant, the Egyptian young lady, Hagar. And I want you to have a child by her. So Abraham agrees to doing this. And after this happens, what, what, what goes on is that Hagar has the child, and the child's name was Ishmael. And Abram was 86 years old when he was born. When the Lord appeared to Abram, again, he was 99 years old. And the Lord changed his name to Abraham and made a covenant with him. And the Lord also changed his wife's name, Sariah, and named her Sarah, and told them that they would have a child together. Well, Abraham, he, he fell to the ground because he had disbelief and he was 99 years old. He started laughing. <laughs> He's like, really? I'm gonna have a child at 99 years old? You know, can you imagine being 99 years old? That's what mostly, uh, you have uh, grandparents in, in, in that age category. But the thing is that you have to realize is that when God says something, God makes it happen. He makes the impossible happen. So the Lord kept his promise and Sarah conceived and gave birth to their first son together. And that was Isaac. Abraham was 100 years old when he was born. But what happened was it took 25 years before the promise of the Lord even happened. But it happened. Now you see that there was some time that, that it went, went on and then the son, Isaac, was, was a little older. So God tested Abraham. He wanted to see where his heart was. So he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, what I want you to do is take your son, your only son, the one whom you love, the only son that you and your wife, Sariah, I mean, Sarah had, and I want you to use your son as the burnt offering. I can only imagine how Abraham felt knowing that he had to use his son as a sacrifice. But being the obedient, godly man that he is, Abraham obeyed the Lord and he went on a three-day journey with his son and two young men. Now they're traveling for three days. And I can just imagine that Abraham is looking at his son constantly during the journey, thinking about, this is my only son. God wants me to have him to be the burnt offering to him. I waited 25 years to be able to have this young man. Now the Lord wants me to use him as the sacrifice. Now on the three, on the third day of the journey, Abraham tells the two young men, he said, guess what? You stay down here. My son and I, we're gonna go up to the top. And Isaac asked his father, he said, Father, where is the burnt offering? Then Abraham said, God will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. So while they're up there, Abraham ties Isaac up and lays him on the altar on top of the wood, and he reaches down to grab his knife to slaughter his son. A voice from heaven comes, is an angel of the Lord. He says, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand on the boy. So, the angel of the Lord said to him, he says, I know that you fear God, seeing that you haven't withheld your only son from me. Abraham shows that he trusted God and God's promise. 
This lets us know that we need to trust the Lord no matter what the situation looks like because the Lord will always bring us through it. Thank you there. And I hope that everybody has a blessed day. And we're going to close with prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you right now, God, just thanking you for this moment, this time. I just ask that you keep everyone safe from all harm and danger. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, Elder Bordley. Thank you. The amazing thing, and what I love about this is, you know, for our youth that's watching this video, you guys, for the last few Sundays, Bishop Thomas and I've even had a chance to, to talk about the life of Abraham. And I don't know if you guys have had a chance to watch the church service. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But what Elder Bordley just did is walked you right through those lessons. So if you have watched the church service, now you're like, wow, okay, okay, okay. You're hearing it again. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I'm so thankful for the, the life of Abraham is amazing to me. Because as you heard Elder Bordley saying, he trusted God. And we know that you guys are in many places, especially during this whole COVID-19. You have to trust God in it. And Amen. maybe you haven't thought about that. How much Amen. you trust God in the midst of this, that relationships are going to be okay. Loved ones are going to be okay. You know, maybe somebody passed away in your family or whatever is going on. You have to trust God in the midst of it. So Elder Bordley, thank you for that lesson and teaching and showing us in the Bible that there's somebody that trusted God, not a fake person, but a real person named Abraham who trusted God. Awesome, awesome lesson. We're going to, uh, we, uh, Elder Bordley already closed out in prayer. I just want to offer an opportunity for any of you guys that are listening that maybe have not given your life unto Jesus Christ. And so we just want to pray a simple prayer. And uh, after this prayer, we'll fit, say a few more things and, and then that'll be it. So if you've never prayed the prayer to ask Jesus to come into your life as your personal Lord and Savior, I invite you now to repeat this prayer after me. The prayer is simple. It says, Dear Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Thank you for loving me and sending Jesus to the cross to die for me. Please save me now. Amen. Amen. Awesome, simple prayer of salvation. Bottom line is, guys, asking that Jesus saves you receiving his son into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. So if you did pray that prayer, please let your parents or your guardians know. And if they need to reach out to us or you need to reach out to us to talk to us about this, please do so. So guys, thank you so much for joining us this Sunday. Remember, you can always rewind it, pause it, go back to it. Share it with your friends as well during this time. A lot of your friends, there ain't, ain't too many people going to church. So a lot of people not having youth church, so they need to hear the word of God again. Next week, we'll get a chance to hear from Elder Bordley again as he walks us further into the word of God. So guys, thank you for joining us. God bless. Have a great week.